I've just spent 10 hours in the car to get these parts and spent a disgraceful amount of money. So, let's unpack. Another secret project. So it is a brand new day. After all the driving and the horrible weather, as you could probably tell in the last clips, it was raining like nothing else. I decided to call it a day and reconvene. But the trip was a success and we got lots of great parts for the DVS, which I'll show you shortly. And since then, I've also got some parts in from America, of all places, for the Aston. Uh, so we'll look at those as well. As you can probably tell, since the last clips, everything's been moved around a little bit because we have a new arrival coming, uh, which I'll talk more about at the end of the video. It's something I didn't expect to be buying, um, but something's really exciting and we'll be introducing that in the next couple of weeks. I went up to the Midlands to buy these parts and it was quite a strange place. It had been a breaker's yard for a long time, but they had specialised in breaking old British sports cars. And once upon a time, these Astons were worth nothing, um, like we talked about in the entry video. Um, so they had just, it was a graveyard full of parts. It was really bizarre. Tons of bonnets, rear ends, front ends. It was really strange, quite sad, but um, most of their stuff had gone now, apparently. They used to have a lot, but it's, uh, it's a different era for these cars now, so nobody's cutting them up anymore so parts are harder and harder to get. With everything that I'm doing on this car I have two choices to have parts remade or find original ones. I think my goal is to use original parts as much as possible especially on the bodywork because I looked into having a new front end made and obviously it's very expensive but there's something about the romance of having an original an original Aston Martin rather than that was actually made in the Aston Martin factory at that point in time. I know you could say well just just having a new front end you still got the rest original well that's not the point but for me repairing the damaged areas with original parts of cars which no longer exist is far more authentic and yes it's perhaps a bit more work but I've, that's just what I want to do. I don't want to have a brand new front end. So I'll show you some of the parts which will complete our front end, which is the main problemed area on the DBS. And I think then we'll also do some metal work today, some sanding, some removal of other bits like chrome and wing mirrors, handles. And yeah, we'll go from there. So let's see what we can do. The part I'm most excited about, mainly because I thought it would be such a nightmare to source one or everything just because it's quite complex and is the very front of the car. So as you can see, this front end has seen better days. I actually know what has happened to the car. It hasn't been in a crash. It was actually vandalized this corner back in the eighties, apparently. So what has happened subsequently is this panel has been removed and tr someone has attempted to repair it and then welded it back on very, very poorly. Um, but yeah, it's, it's no good and it also means the bonnet doesn't fit fit the same. What's actually curious is the old bonnet I had just over there was far too small for the car. Whereas this one is ultimately more suited to the car, but this corner doesn't marry up because of the repair panel. But this is just one of the nuances on rebuilding or restoring a handmade car, especially an old English handmade car, is not, there's no cases of one bonnet fits all or this sort of thing. Every single car is different every single bonnet was different to fit in the very unique handmade guttering, which is different on each car. So, you know, I've, I've known people who've gone about the same method as me and want to use original parts who've ended up buying about six or seven bonnets until 
they found one which was as close as possible and which I know is it's you know you could say modify the bonnet but anyway each to their own but the car was vandalized and this this happened the chassis is absolutely perfect underneath um which is is great because I think when I first saw this I was worried it had been crashed or something but then I heard the story of it being vandalized and that was great so this new front panel as you can see it's a whole new front nose on both sides which is great because we've got a bit of denting here which is also part of vandalism that side is nowhere near as bad as this side and obviously doesn't have a repair section but that new front end or new old front end is perfect it's never had any work on it it's actually bare metal it's very dirty but that's great because i could see there was no filler on it um so it actually goes to about here which is great because it means we can remove this whole dodgy area and have it properly pieced on so we'll have a beautiful front end again and then what that leaves is this piece. Uh, I've got another section for that coming, so we'll talk about that soon, but that's really good. Also, when that new piece is put on, we'll, everything will be very carefully aligned with the bonnet. So the bonnet will be vital in getting the placement right and the fitment. So we've got all the components and this bonnet is fantastic. It's very straight and much, much better than the other one I've got. As some of you might remember from the first episode, the car actually came with a later bonnet um, to make it look like an AMV8. It also had an AMV8 bumper, which is just over there. I think all of that was done, I think it was done for styling reasons, but also to, it was the easiest way to get rid of the damaged areas and make them disappear using these fiberglass parts that were on the AMV8 and all that sort of thing. So that's great. We've got that part of the front end. We've got a great bonnet. We've got a repair section coming in for that final piece. But as the car was converted to look like an AMV8, we have a rather unfortunate situation. We had no front valance area. And when I say front valance, I don't mean the fiberglass box section they had uh, on the front of the V8s, the in intake. I mean, the actual lower section, which makes up the base where the grill sits, everything. This is actually all that was left of it on the car when it arrived and it's already broken in half there was no shape to it this is where things got slightly worrying because again things to be remade so it's it's all relative but the front end which i found didn't have that piece as you can see it's cut there which is how most of them were cut because that was the easiest way to take them off it's been cut very well it's very clean but i was like how am i ever going to find one of these bits and i got searching i couldn't find anything and then eventually I found one on eBay USA. So I messaged the seller and he wanted to know, he was really interested in my project in general. He, was a, he wasn't a parts seller, he was a enthusiast and someone who had restored a couple of Astons of DBSs and he just wanted to chat and hear about my project. And he ended up donating the part to my project, which was really kind of him. Uh, I had to pay for postage from America, which was a boatload but I was just so chuffed that it arrived. And I picked it up from the UPS store a few days ago and this is the part in question. As you can see, and I'll insert some pictures now of what it looks like just loosely on the car so you can kind of gauge where it sits and how it all marry up. Obviously sitting on the car now, it doesn't work because it's not made to sit with the front end cuts that have happened on my car, but when it's all introduced with this new piece and everything, it will just align beautifully and yeah, we'll have a lovely front end and made up of all original parts, which is really hard to do. So that makes up the new body panels for the DBS, but there is more. I was very lucky that my DBS came with more or less everything, but there were a few parts missing. The rear bumper was there, but the front bumper wasn't. And I looked online and you could get a uh, a brand new one for about £1,200, which was just a lot of money and, again, defeated the point of trying to be all original. But there was tons of rear bumpers available, but no front ones. But eventually one popped up, and here it is. So it's in quite nice condition. It does need re-chroming. There's no rust or anything, but as you can probably see, the chroming is getting a bit thin, so there's a lot of wave on it. But that is the absolute least of our problems. So that's great. We've got that. What else do we have? Very boring, but new door latch. So that is our little parts inventory update. I'm trying to think what else we need. We've got the whole of the front end now, which is amazing. And we've got that piece, which is missing on the side coming in. And I think that's all the parts that were missing from the car, except for an armrest, but 
I'll talk about that another time because I have secured one, which is great. So we're at the point now where everything that was missing has been attained. So now it's the fun bit, which I've been putting off for a while because I started it, as you all know, is bodywork. The car is largely stripped and now I just need to go over the whole car, getting rid of any final paint areas, getting the metalwork perfect. As you know, we're not using filler. Uh, this car has seen too much filler, filler in its life and it will not see it again. So we're gonna go over the whole car, get the aluminium perfect. I have made a start I on the driver's side, which I'll show you now. That is up to 400 grit through the door. You can see the front wing, that's still at 80 grit. So I go down, I'm very careful with the 80 grit just to get any low divots out. As you can see, this is straight off the paint removal disc. So it leaves very, it's kind of very similar to using 80 grit sandpaper, but less uniform. But then once it's had its work, it's much smoother and you can, I mean, there's still dents. We haven't done any dent, dent work yet, but that's the way I'm getting it to be perfect. And then once that's all done. And the car is all in 400 grit or around that area. That's when I'm gonna start doing dent pulling and all of that sort of thing. But I just want the car to be a completely uniform surface so we can analyze everything. The part of this which is the scariest is edges. The lines on this car are beautiful, but they're also not actually that consistent. Again, this is handmade. Every car is different. You can just see slight, you know, if you follow a body line, for example here, you'll find it's not actually dead perfect. These weren't stamped out. These were literally hammered out and English wheeled and everything. So, which is the beauty of them. But so of course there's no part of me that expects to ever get an unbelievable degree of perfection on the lines because they never were perfect. But you also don't want to ruin the lines. And obviously you have to be very careful using power tools, even orbital sanders around aluminium on edges. So as you can see on this area, I've taped it all up and that is going to be the last area I do. So I'm gonna do all the more flat panels, open areas, which are just very simple to do. And then I'll do the rest, all the edges by hand. I'm not gonna use any power tools on it. It's not worth the risk. It's not worth the hassle if it goes wrong. I don't want to start adding, having to add material. I want to keep it as it was. So let's pull the car outside and do some sanding. So probably three hours later, I have partially finished the boot lid and the passenger side rear quarter. I was watching the time lapses back and it's just remarkable. You know, it, they're meant to be satisfying, but so little happens even in that fast forwarded edit. It's just such a meticulous and long process because you're taking away such a small amount of metal, even with 80 grit. Uh, on the boot, I hit it initially with the 80 grit, as you saw, and it left all of these divots or the, all these divots became very clear. So I actually ended up going down to 60 grit. I don't, which even that took a long time. And this is where it's roughly left us. So it's a huge amount better than it was. Very smooth. And yeah, I mean, even 60 grit was having a hard time, but I don't really want to go down to 40 grit on anything. It just seems a bit too callous, but, and then on the wing, as you can see, we've made a lot of progress. Still a few divots. I haven't, this is certainly not a finished job but you can also see the light 
dents that are here on the quarter, which need to be removed. But this is where I want each panel to get to at this initial stage. Then we go back in, do all the edges, pull the dents, all that sort of detail work. But I just want to make a very clear sheet over the whole car of around 80 grit. And as you can see, all, then that's when we start doing shaping, because as you can see on the boot, that's got some damage on the edges, so it needs to be hammered up and got perfectly flat. So yeah, that's where we're at right now. I think I'm gonna call it a day, get back to this tomorrow. Obviously it's a really boring process and it's not something that can really be documented other unless I make just hour long videos. So it's something I think in the future episodes I'll highlight, but we'll have to go on to filming other areas because realistically, it's gonna take a long time to get this body the way it needs to be. So I might just finish off this process and then tune back in when I'm removing dents and things like that. But luckily we have a new car coming uh, in the next episode, which I mentioned earlier, and I'm very excited. It's not a car I expected to be getting, and um, which makes it even more cool, but the only clue I'll give is it's a double. So we already have one of them on the channel. So Aston or Lancia, you guess. <laughs> um, but that's going to be really cool and it will help uh, with the existing build and also be another cool build in itself. I think it's too, too good to be just a parts car, but we'll see, we'll have to see what finances allow. And yeah, so that'll be coming soon. So put your guesses in the comments and let me know what kind of content you want to see regarding the Aston build. I think. On the Patreon, I'll do longer, just pull out, you know, hour long videos of just me recording the sanding process, if that's what people want to see. But realistically, it's not suited for this kind of YouTube content. So yeah, so let me know what you think, what you want to see. And if you want to support the channel, the link to the Patreon is below. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends, and I will see you next time. Thank you.